I've always been very interested in solving mysteries and puzzles. And to me, the fundamental laws of the universe are the ultimate mystery to try to solve. In order to understand the mysteries of the universe, we have to really dig into uh, what's happening at the fundamental level of individual particles and things like photons and electrons. And that is the theory of quantum physics. I'm Shohini Ghosh. I'm a quantum physicist and a professor of physics and computer science at Wilfrid Laurier University in Canada. And I'm rethinking computing by using the power of quantum mechanics for computing and communication. Quantum computing is actually very different from our regular computing because it's not just that this is a more powerful version of what we have today. It's actually an entirely different framework for computing itself. For example, our regular computers operate on a fundamental unit of information called the bit, which is nothing but a binary digit, which is either a zero or a one. Zero and one can be quite restrictive. So instead, what we could do is imagine a situation where uh, our bit is not quite a zero and not quite a one, but it has some probability of being a zero and some probability of being a one. And that's what we call a superposition. And that is what a quantum bit actually is described as, or a qubit. That seems like it might be less precise, but actually what we're doing is we're expanding the possibilities of where we can do our calculation. So if you're very clever about it, that actually helps us to, to find paths to get from one point to another, and we can actually find faster ways to get there. And that's the basis of a quantum computer. It's not the case that a quantum computer is better at every task and will somehow speed up everything we do. For example, if you're just writing emails, you're not going to see a huge speed up somehow that, that will make your emails faster or better. But what w might happen is that at the back end, a quantum encryption system might be able to improve the security and the privacy of your communication. And what's really important is that if this is uh, done in a way that is um, you know, really error-free and engineered perfectly, then in fact it's completely unhackable meaning to break this encryption, you'd have to break the laws of physics. We don't have the large-scale quantum computers yet. We have small port prototypes that have been used to test out whether or not we can create applications for use in the future. But when we have large-scale quantum computers, that could become game-changing because it could be used for things like doing better simulations of molecules that we're, we are trying to understand for building better drugs, for example, maybe for better solar cells, or for even clothing, for so many different areas of use, would be really, really uh, very exciting if we could build large-scale quantum computers that could do that kind of uh, task much better than what we can do today. Any technology that's going to impact so many aspects of human society must be carefully thought out, and we're not very good at doing that. But in this case, I hope this will be a chance for us to do it right. Because there are obviously many, many possible questions and risks. For example, if we're talking about encryption and security, who will have access to that? On top of that, um, it's really important to ask, how are we going to find the resources to be able to build these large devices? Um, how will it impact the environment? And finally, oh, oh, there's actually a lot of significant challenges in even building these devices. It's not quite clear whether we can even really scale them up because nobody has been able to show decisively that as we build larger and larger quantum computers, we're going to be able to do it in a way that's sustainable and scalable. And we don't even know whether quantum computers can be efficiently produced yet. And we'll have to do a lot of error correction because they're very, very fragile and even the slightest bit of error or noise completely destroys the calculation. So that's part of what we have to be thinking about as we move forward. Is it really worth it? And if so, how do we do it in a way that's responsible and sustainable? I don't know the answer. What I would dream of is that as we 
try to build these devices, we find out something interesting about some aspect of quantum theory itself. So perhaps if we, for example, combine quantum theory with machine learning, where machine learning is actually a process by which we're trying to find out patterns that perhaps we didn't really understand before. So if you could use quantum machine learning and then apply it to quantum theory itself and try to see whether there's something more there about all of these very strange quantum properties to build out the theory. That would be really, to me, very, very exciting as a physicist. That's where I want to go. Rather than build, yeah, another, another computer that's powerful is great, but understanding the laws of the universe is way, way cooler.